Let's turn it off. Let me kind of go. Hi, Okay. Um, we're on the record here, so. Um, all right. Um, just wanted to let y'all know that um, last Sunday I had a partially ruptured appendix. Yeah, I'm not supposed to be back here actually, but I got a lot of emails from students in my 3301 class. So um, I did stuff for that, um, but I'm still supposed to be in bed uh, like for another week. So, but seven week course, I'll have two weeks. The students are sort of kind of fucked, right? Um, yeah, you know, it's one of those. I'm sorry that happened to you, but I'm one of the boys. Yeah, I know. I, I know. mean, I know. It's nothing you can do about it, nothing I can do about it. I get it. I, yeah. I get so, um, I get but I did get them done today. I got them done this morning. Yeah, I got them done this morning. So, I sent you an email telling you, dude, I'm drowning here, man. I, and I'm still getting to them. I have 358 emails in my inbox. Well, if you get to mine, you're just going to have to disregard every one of them. Yeah, and, we, and I saw your recent one, so we can have a meeting even just after we finish today, if that's okay with you. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, okay. It's okay. So, uh, and I'm still struggling here and still some pain meds and stuff like that. So, um, we won't go too long. Then I can't physically do realistically more than two to three hours of work at a time without being put up for a couple more hours and then going back to work. So um, uh, going about as fast as I can. I woke up on Sunday morning, at 6 a.m. Right? Um, we're gonna go to church and you know, do all this sort of stuff. And I said, you know, there's no way I can go to church. I have this massive pain right here i mean massive i mean it hurts hurts right and i've had back surgeries before so pretty good with pain yeah yeah so um that is not good yeah. um so i basically though it's weird though um, i know yeah i know that's why when i put on the 33 one but i had emergency surgery i wasn't fucking around being like yeah i just want to be lazy right um, um, I didn't read it. <laughs> um, so I had like this huge pain. Oh my god! And it's just, but I can tell now. I can tell when it partially ruptured because the pain kind of goes in a way, like for about an hour or so. So I was like, oh, everything's okay. You know, maybe something I ate or you know something like that. But then the pain came back, and my wife was like, "You're going to the emergency room right now." Right. And I was like, oh, no, it'll be okay. Said, Thank God I didn't. Right away, you know. Because you've been dead. Yeah. So, so you put the. She loaded up the kids in the car, right? They don't let kids in the emergency room now because of all the COVID stuff and everything like that. You can't have visitors or anything like that. So I just went in there. The doctor came came by. He said, his name was Taylor as well. So I told him he had a top class name, right? <laughs> Uh, and he said, you know, basically, we're, we're really not going to know exactly what it is until we do like the CT scan, right? Um, but um, here's some morphine for you, <laughs> right? You know, just to uh, subside some of the pain. And he said, well, you know, you're not going to like what I'm about to tell you. And I'm like, well, what? And he said, well, there's only realistically two things that cause pain like that. One is your appendix, you have appendicitis. Or it's a huge kidney stone that can't get through, right? Either way, <laughs> you know, um, it was bad. So kidney stone is not as bad, right? 
like to your life, but pain wise, it's probably yes. will make you feel like you want to die. Yeah, so, <laughs> um, so the doctor came in and um, after a CT scan or whatever, um, doctor came in and he goes, Oh, we got the results of your CT scan. Um, yeah, you're definitely gonna have to have surgery. And I said, Well, wait, what? You know, like, um, he was like, No, and I said, Well, how long, you know. Uh, just send me home with something and we can do it tomorrow. He's like, no, we need to do this like the next 30 to 45 minutes, have you under the next 30 to 45 minutes realistically. The other doctor's like on his way to come talk to you, right? So they got signed some form, it's kind of out of it because uh, they gave a lot more pain, right? So I just like signed it, right? Um, they could have been taking out my organs and stuff I'm on the market in Brazil or something like that, but I didn't, I didn't care at that point. And then I had the surgery probably within an hour and a half of getting to the emergency room. So, um, um, so yeah. it's been crazy, right? So, walking, walking. very lucky, very lucky. And the wife was like, get your ass up. We're going to the emergency room, right? Wow. So, um, that's why I've been out for a little bit. I'm not supposed to be back yet, but I had to do the 3301 stuff. So, I figured. Why not at least give a little bit of? You were wondering why you why why you get married? I would. I probably would have stayed in bed completely rush. There's no way I would have gone to the emergency room. You owe your life, your life. <laughs> in many ways, right? Um, but um, but yeah. So that's why I've been out. So if you have emails sent to me, I have 358 currently. Uh, uh, most of them are similar to yours, like, oh, how am I going to write this paper in three days, which is a, a valid, like, I'm in deep shit here. What, what are you going to do? I just said I'm drowning. I'm drowning. I don't know what to do. So, uh, and then I push that back. I put an announcement up today in 3301 as well. And I extended everything, and, um, and I've even made it to the point where we may just count your rough draft as your final draft and turn it in on the last day of the semester. I'll be fine with that, too. Um, but because literally they're supposed to do like this Sunday, and I just got the proposals back to them, right? So imagine, or these students they already taken 3301, right? Writing your 3301 paper in five days, all of it. And you do not take it in the eight week course, like they gave it to the bunch of morons. I, I, I tell the truth, right? I tell the truth about that over and over. And, Bookstore and the counselors, they need to be shut. <laughs> I don't know about shut. We're not, I don't want to be impeached like Trump, right? For advocating violence, right? <laughs> um, right? We, I don't want to be up here. Kids dark, man. I don't want to be in front of the uh, <laughs> the United States Senate trying to defend my life or whatever, right? Um, um, the conspiracy theorist does say he's going to be back in power by March 4th. I saw that somewhere. That's what they're saying. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're coming back. If they, he is going to make millions, though. You'd be guaranteed of that. All they're doing is giving that dude money. I guess. He's going to cool, though. If he does come back on March 4th, is in power on March 4th, whoever made the conspiracy theory is going to be a genius. Yeah, right? Go write a five page book and be a. Not That's even true. that. He, he'll be, yeah. he'll be up there. All right. So I thought I'd give you a little bit of an update on it. So I expect things to come a little slower. So what about the test? In this it, it'll be pushed back. I, we won't have a test until we cover all the material. Okay. And if we have to cut things off at the end, um, we have to cut things off at the end. I'm the instructor of records, so I don't give a fuck. So. Uh, <laughs> Okay. Oh, you know, got you. Yes, sir. Look. Look. We're not teaching medicine here, right? We're not having a little bit of it will doom you. Are you like Thomas Jefferson? They gave the like, young guy all the jobs. Because <laughs> well, you guys are all older than you. I, I, my is point of view. What happened is that he just gave you all the responsibility. That is it. So it hasn't been too bad though, right? You know, um, um, 
I won't get it. Other programs are a little bit, let's just say, less communicative than I am usually about what's going on and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, and yeah, who's gonna who's gonna get mad? Literally, there's no person at this university that can even judge whether I even taught this course correctly. Literally, right? There's no one in Japan, right? I am the person who holds all the expertise in these two areas in East Asian politics. That's it. It's me. That's it, right? So who's going to, oh, you didn't cover what you're supposed to. How would you know? In America? Not in America, of course. But here at YouTube, How definitely. Many? Not many. In my Japan class, probably. Yeah. In the Japan class, my stuff is probably the most cutting edge in the state of Texas, yeah. realistically. Um, even if you compare things like UT Austin's Japan specialist, she's a fraud, right? Uh, I don't say fraud. Um, other places, you know, my dissertation advisor is now an uh, administrator. He's a associate provost of Texas Tech for so basically he runs all the satellite campuses of Texas Tech for Texas. Texas. So he didn't even teach that much anymore. Maybe one class a year, maybe. So you need to teach anymore. So, yeah. Um, so yeah. So of course I can teach whatever I want. That's the beauty of this gig, <laughs> right? You can do whatever I want. Who's, who's gonna say? Anything? Hey, hey. It's fun though. Um, by the way, my Japan syllabus is like, it's like you. You can tell they've taken parts out for other like an Ivy League universities. They've taken parts of my syllabus and like implemented into theirs. I wanted to be like, stop stealing my shit, right? Mm -hmm. But then I was like, oh, that's kind of good, actually. If someone else wants to steal your stuff, that probably means you're doing the right, right stuff. Yeah. yeah. All right. Mal. Good guy, Mal? Nah. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Right? Now, we covered this last time a little bit, but since it's been a week, I feel that it might be um, a little bit of advantageous. Um, for us to kind of go back over it a little bit, okay? The mass line, okay? Mao abhorred the Confucian notion that rulers know what to do because of their mastery of classical doctrine, okay? He didn't like that elitist point of view. Communism, and especially this brand, the Mao brand, is, as we talked about before, rural communism, okay? is different than what you saw in the Soviet Union, okay? Where elites inside the city knew all this communist doctrine. It was just a replacement for the most part from the czars and those sort of rulers, right? And they just really replaced them with KGB and secret police, okay? China's a lot different, okay? Because the power of the Communist Party in China always came from the rural areas. That's Mao's people, okay? Mao's people are not in the cities. Mao doesn't like the cities, okay? And we don't want to make comparisons too often to this person, but it's very similar in the way that Adolf Hitler wasn't really accepted, right, by the intelligence sort of life in Nazi Germany before. Sure, absolutely. He, he, he wasn't really... No one thought he was great. No one thought Mao was great either. Okay, in cities. None of the intellectuals thought much of Mao. Okay? They never thought he was that smart. They never thought he was that um, special in any way, shape, or form. And it's that similar sort of approach. Okay? Now, of course, we don't really want to compare the two because one, one is a genocidal murdering maniac, right? And the other one is a murdering maniac that kills people because he doesn't know what he's doing, right? He doesn't know anything about agriculture, right? And then everybody starves, okay? Those are two different types of things. I know um, you see a lot of things. You Adolf know, Hitler knew what he was doing. I, he knew exactly <laughs> what he was processing. Yeah, he, he knew exactly he knew where he was going. Mal just... Mal believes in the people, but he doesn't really have a good sense of organization of agricultural interests, right? How to build it up. So when crop yields go down, he has no idea why. 
uh, the other people don't know why around him, and people starve to death. Okay, that's not to say that there's no political repression and or extrajudicial uh, extra killings or anything like that. It's not to say that, that it exists, but it's just not at the same level as that. Okay. Um, well, what they had was the mass line. Okay, and the mass line was a way in which what we would call the elites under Mao, okay, would try to understand what was happening in the populace, okay? In the United States, we have two ways that we do that, right? How do leaders know when Americans are pissed off? Public opinion polling, right? And elections, okay? And they don't have either of those in China, okay? Because no one would tell you the truth on poll anyways. They would automatically assume it's secret police or something like that, right? If someone called you on the phone and China said, how is Chairman Mao doing, right? Wonderful click, right? No one's going to tell you a real opinion, okay? Because they know what the punishment is, okay? It'd be similar to doing a public opinion poll in North Korea, right? You say, how's Kim Jong-un doing? What do you think they're going to say? Terrible, right? Get them out of here, right? There's no protest at the Capitol but in North even Korea. Even in our democracy, do we do we know what's going on with our? I, this is the opposite way. This is elites trying to understand what the masses are. What the populace is. Yeah, doing. they're trying to understand the things that. Yeah. Um, um, we. I, I would say that um, democracy gets this part mostly right, but your reverse point is accurate, right? Uh, we don't really know what's going on with the elites. It's hard to know. Because um, they haven't been right on a poll in, I, I mean, yeah. in either direction. They they don't know it until we don't know. You know, in our democracy, we don't know until we get there. Yeah, and- you know, Hillary um, Clinton shocked them, you know. Yeah, sure. And- Cried over it, you know what <laughs> I mean? It was hey, a bad day. One of, my favorite, one of my best friends here, she's retired now. This is a true story. She is a social work professor. I love her to death. Right? She had Hillary inaugural ball tickets. Oh, man. They were already selling them, and she had bought them in her era. Right? I, I, oh, my God. So she was one of those that were at the little glass thing crying. Mm -hmm. No, I don't know her watching Michael cry. He's one of the strongest women I've ever met. I don't so think she's she cried about anything, to be honest. But she's probably like, you think you're crying? Oh, you cry like to this. say she was upset about the result would be an sure, understatement. Sure. Um, um, so. Man, I would love to talk to her. <laughs> she, Looking around that room, I mean, there, there were people that were crying. She's a great social work professor until she retired recently. Cool. She's great. I love, I love her. She was great. Um, um, she always carried inside her purse, too. <laughs> and she was serious. This lady was cool, right? So she's like, someone might try to do something, take me while I'm here. I'm like, hey, you do me? Someone's going to come up to you. You're like, in a class you carried? And she was like, you never know, Taylor, right? And I'm like, yeah, you're right. You never know. Right. Um, you don't ever know, so stay close. Yeah, yeah. That's, um, um, so I said, oh, you know. Um, um, that was always the joke, right? She was the most left-wing person in our social sciences department, and our most right-wing are usually the crim guys, right? And the crim guys always carry, right? So the left-wing and the right-wing were always carrying at the same time, and nothing bad happened. So I always thought it's going to be okay, right? I always thought, you know, if someone comes down here, we got enough weapons in this hallway, right? You know, in that what was the Korean kid over at Virginia Tech, Cho Sung Lee, right? Oh, he went in there and he, he, he went, trust me, that wouldn't have worked down our hallway, right? The crew guys would have been ready for that, yeah, right? They're oh, yeah, they're all former cops and stuff like that, too. Oh, so. hey, too like or they're sheriffs or that sort of stuff, or even if they're attorneys now, they still carry like all the time, right? Um, so, um, the hallway where my office is, that's the safest hallway you could be. 
No one's worried about a gunman coming down here. Right? Like, you know, that's not the hallway to get to. It was like the, oh, I, I don't want to say the guy's name because we kind of blanked out his name, but the guy that did the shooting around here, like two years, like a year, year and a half, maybe ago. Yeah, he got shot up with at, the, at, the, at the movie theater, right? And stole the mail truck. Yeah. Um, um, they said, uh, well, some of the national news was like, oh, well, why didn't he go into the Home Depot and start shooting people? Why was he doing it in a car? You know, I wanted someone to come out and go, it's West Texas, Home Depot, carrying <laughs> and trying to spray people down at Home Depot is one of the worst ideas ever. Like, literally, everybody in Odessa carries at Home Depot. That is so true. <laughs> right? Like, this, this attack would have been over in milliseconds. <laughs> there would have been 20 people to mow it down inside the. That is true. No one, you can't survive. I mean, it's just. It'd be the worst, you know, lone gunman attack I've ever heard of, right? I mean, just go to Home Depot like on a Sunday and just see how many people are carrying. Okay. Right? It's probably at least seventy-five percent, right, of the of the customers. Right. So, all right. It's the same with shooting in Texas. Oh yeah, yeah, in Texas, yeah, definitely. If too. come to my church, there's they, probably they are so dead. I mean, there might be crossfire that hit somebody, but I guarantee you. Yeah, they're not going. They're not going to make that. That ain't, ain't, ain't going out. I mean, didn't that happen in a church? Was that in Texas? No, yeah, that was in Texas. Was, Spring, right? They didn't have any guns. It was in uh, close to uh, uh, Brun New Brunswick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a. Uh... That's into the Dripping Springs where they didn't care. Literally, he hit most of the church. The only way that he he got nailed was a guy heard it next door and he got his AK. The AK <laughs> started trying to tell him to get out, and he ran him down. That's in Dripping Springs. And yeah. shot him and shot him dead. Yeah. Well, he got away, but he eventually, you know, died on the road. Then who is that? I, I know, you know. Glad to get a death penalty to that idiot kid. What was that idiot kid's name? Some little kid. What is the purpose of He went into the, the black church or whatever. I, he got the death penalty. He got like eight death penalties, right? So like, even if he gets one overturned, like this is this kid's not going anywhere. Um, well, this guy went in for the pastor. Well, the pastor was on vacation. You think he did your homework? <laughs> But the sad thing about it is, he killed his he killed his daughter. Wow. And so I mean, literally, forty five people for the Lord. I mean, it was all almost all. Who's he mad about? Well, it comes out. He was just. It wasn't anything. It, it was not. Was it anything, anything like really messed up? He was just mad because the pastor told him, basically told him straight out where he was at. And, you know, what do you need to do? And, well, you know, I mean, don't go to a pastor. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're kind of there to tell you how to live your me. life, right? They don't come to me unless you want me to tell you the truth. Yeah. I, I never heard of a pastor being sugarcoating it for someone either, ever. Right? And being like, you know, all those drugs you're doing, totally okay. No problem. Right? I've never heard of a pastor ever saying that. We're kind, but we, we have to be straight. You're asking oh, yeah, sure. answer, right? Especially in counsel, you know, whenever someone's asking for counsel about something. Yeah, they right. say, yeah, 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 yeah. What do you think, Pastor? Great job, right? No. Um, We're either hated or loved, that's for sure. That's okay. That's okay. All right. Um, Mass line. Mass line, right? Basically, what they would do is they would go back and report it up the chain, right? They would go back in and they would say, hey, this party leader, this is what people were saying in line, right? This is what people were saying out there, okay? So it's about what populace was thinking about. Yeah, yeah, because in overwhelmingly the rural areas, not necessarily the cities, okay? Um, because Mao's brand of communism doesn't really care about the intellectuals, okay? When we get to the Cultural Revolution, the Great Leap Forward, they're going to kill everybody, okay? They're going to murder pretty much any person that can read. They're going to try to murder every person that can read during the Cultural Revolution, okay? So, you know, this idea that the intellectuals were holding us back and all this other stuff. No, it's because you don't know how to farm, right? That's why this is going bad, right? 
not because some intellectual once read a book on capitalism, right? Um, uh, so whenever we get into that, the crazy thing is, Mao's not the biggest player in the Cultural Revolution. It's his wife. His wife was bloodthirsty. Oh. Yeah, his wife was. Whew, she was special, right? All right. Mass line. Try to alleviate two main problems of dictatorships. Okay. Losing touch with popular sentiment and generating political apathy in the people who come to believe they can't influence their own leaders. Okay. By the way, this right here, who come to believe they can't influence their own leaders, that's how you get riots. That's how you get insurrections, right? That's how you get attacks on the Capitol, right? They believe that they couldn't influence their own leaders. Okay. Except for that one guy that thought he was some sort of a shaman or whatever. I, res I respect that. That's probably a true statement. Yeah, they, they felt like they... They both, feel both like, sides, they're tired. Yeah, they're, tired they're just tired and they don't, they don't think feel that into. Yeah, but, but right. that's not a that's not a new that's not a new thing in world history either, right? I mean that's a that's a common thing. Um I don't know about the guy with the antlers though. I don't know if you saw the guy with the antlers. I did. I did. Right? The guy with the antlers. Yeah. He's claiming religious persecution because he's ashamed of yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I mean, I respect the uh, the attempt there to get off of it by saying, you know, this well, is a religious Half person. of it was, okay, when a guy goes in Pelosi's, in Pelosi's office and just starts doing stupid stuff and they're taking pictures of himself. I mean, they had two or three of them in there and they just want to say they got their offer. Yeah, hope it was worth it for them, right? Right. You know, Fed's so much around with this sort of stuff. Yeah, right? Federal ahead. prosecutors, they are not going to go, you know what? It's okay, buddy. Right? I understand you're a little mad. Yeah, why don't you just uh, uh, take this jaywalking ticket and head on home? Right? That is not what's going to happen. They're going to throw the book at everybody. No, they they're going to do all these people. They've already lost years. their jobs. The 10 people that did it here in Texas, they've already lost their jobs. They've lost their jobs. They've, look, these bills, and they won't get one. Yeah. They're, well, they're not going to need one because, well, I mean, they're going to get one inside prison, right? They're going to be making license plates. You really think they're going to put them in? There? Oh yeah, I think they're going to put them for 30, 40 years. Yeah, yeah. You think that? Oh yeah, they're going to throw the book. Yeah, these federal prosecutors, they are not going to mess around with this. Um, uh, they're not going to put. Well, that's sad because they did that to the Portland building. They did it to a. Yeah, well, I mean, and that's. They're, and they're not going to. I believe that that's what they'll argue on appeal. Yeah, not, I believe that's a thing. I think it's the goal. I mean, just man, I don't, I'm just telling you, they're not going to put. You, that's, man, that's a, that's they're not going to put B team federal prosecutors on this, right? They're going to put the toughest prosecutors they have in the circuits on putting them down for a long, long time. I I guarantee you. But did. we'll see. We'll see whenever the I, indictments I, are released. I'm interested because they didn't do anything on Portland, and it was a federal building. We'll see. I mean, they attacked it, burned it. I mean, I don't know what more you could have done to a federal building to get. <laughs> they were we'll trying see. to burn it down. We'll see. Uh, all right. Uh, in practice, the political system that developed after 49 seriously corroded the mass line. Okay. Uh, local officials often shied away from accurately reporting the views uh, of the populace for fear of exposing discontent with their own work. Okay. Think about it this way. Let's say you're in charge of this little village, okay? And your boss is in charge of this county type area, okay? And you go in and you listen to the mass line and they say, you're doing a shit job, right? Do you go and tell your boss that all the people just said you're doing a shit job? Right? That's a good way to end up in trouble, okay? Not just at your job, but also think about this is that it's not a democracy in the sense of, okay, so what happens if you lose in a democracy? You write a book, you make millions, right? What happens if you lose your job in an authoritarian regime? You die, right? You're sent to the labor camps, right? 
So there's a lot more emphasis on trying to cover your ass, make sure you don't say too much, okay? So uh, what happened was a lot of the people that were lower level sort of leaders at the village level were accurately reporting what the mass line was saying anyways, okay? And there's no check in it. They were not actually... They wouldn't report the truth, okay. right? Um, it's like, it's like, um, think about this. You go on a date, but you're out of a job. Do you say I'm unemployed? No, right? You say, I'm searching for further opportunities. Right? Oh, do you have, uh, do you have an education? No, I'm looking to go back to school, right? You don't say, no, I've just been smoking weed in my house for the last six weeks, right? It's the same thing the mass line people were doing, okay? They were trying to butter it up a little bit, right? Or they were trying to um, wrap it in glitter, right? A nice wrapping paper. Oh, it's not going that bad there. Yeah, there's some discontent here when it was really fervent. Okay, does that make sense? And that's why it's going to erode. And that's why the people are going to stop believing in it too, okay? Because they know even if they say the truth to this village leader, they're not going to report it accurately all the way up. So why, right? So why bother? Okay. All right. Also, people grew hesitant to voice their real opinions to officials who could wreck their lives with virtually a wave of their hand. And that happens all the time. That's not specific to communism, though, right? That's jobs. That, you're all kind of young, so probably you haven't worked in a place where that happens, where one comment made out of line can end your career, right? And so, um, um, yeah. Why talk, right? Just keep it to yourself and just hope that at some point it's going to get better, right? Um, and just hope that the slogan goes away. It's the famous slogan, right? The beatings will continue until morale improves, right? And that's the way that it really was there. Okay. All right. One of the other features of Maoist was campaigns. Right? I mean, you think of campaigns, we think of annoying commercials, right? We think of the same commercial over and over, right? At least when I was a kid. The one that I heard all the time was, I'm Bob Dole, vote for Bob Dole because I'm Bob Dole, oh right? Goodness, I remember that. Right? And he just said his name over and over and over and over again, right? And it was extremely annoying while I'm trying to watch my cartoons, right? It was on every channel, right? Bob Dole commercials, okay? Campaigns in Communist China are not campaigns in that sense. They are usually what we would call attempts to rid the country of certain types of people. In communism, there's always, there's always this one group that's holding it down, right? If we could just get these people out of the way, communism would thrive, right? You see it in the United States Communist Party too, right? If we got rid of all these wealthy people, we could have this kind of nursery and everything's gonna work perfectly, right? It happened in Venezuela, right? It happens all over the place, right? Chavez, we got to get rid of this Western imperialist, right? Oh, okay. Well, we don't want to go there anymore because you tank your whole economy, right? We're not there anymore, right? Oh, well, they're uh, waging an economic war. We don't care about you, honestly, Venezuela. Uh, we can get our oil from so many other places. We don't care about you, right? Oh, well, they're waging war. They're doing this. They're doing that. There's always a scapegoat. Okay. In democracies, usually the scapegoats are usually politicians, right? Politicians cannot be scapegoats under communism. It can't be allowed. Okay. And so these campaigns often occur throughout time and they would try to get rid of one type of person or one type of individual. Campaigns, the broad goals were social political transformation and economic development, okay? We need to do this to get more economic development so we can be a richer country, okay? We need to transform our country so that it has X, Y, or Z instead of, you know, option F or G, okay? 
Campaigns on the first were trying to change the way that people thought about key issues and social relationships. Okay. Some mass campaigns, such as the Cultural Revolution. Okay. Now look at this. Okay. I put the years up there. That's a long ass campaign, right? <laughs> That's a 10 year campaign. Okay. Bad things happen in a 10 year period. Okay. Ten years of getting rid of people? Ten years. That's a serious thing. Okay. Um, especially when you think of think about it this way. The Cultural Revolution, it's 10 years long. If you think we'll just say that Hitler dies in April 45, early April 45. It was about the same length as Third Reich, 35 to 45, right? Because um, they're going to invade Poland in 38, right? So you're talking about a longer period than the rise of the Third Reich in Nazi Germany, whenever you think about the Cultural Revolution, okay? So that's why whenever we're going to talk about the numbers of people killed, you're going to go, how is that possible, right? You're going to realize this is 10 years, okay? 10 years of campaign to be Fair? I don't know if we want to be fair on extrajudicial killings, but if we're going to be fair about it. Um, the Cultural Revolution also is much more. Um, um, rather than it is uh, big problems other than specifics. Okay, right? They're going to go for certain people specifically, but for the most part, a lot of the people dying were also dying because of famine. Okay. Which wasn't really true under the point of right? Those were all killings. Okay. All right. Um, the second type of campaign was uh, basically used to change basic forms of production. They do things like to collective uh, collectivize agricultural production or to socialize an industry or commerce. Um, even though we're going to think about this in sort of a communist China point of view, the main one to think about is whenever Venezuela socialized all their oils. Right, that's what we would think of with a campaign of that type. Okay, not not all of them were like the Cultural Revolution. Okay, not all of them were that. Sometimes they were fairly benign and might have actually worked. Okay, um, not all things ended up like the Cultural Revolution. So, all right. So on this particular side slide. Oh, sorry. Let me let me put this down so you can see there. That's okay. On this particular slide, we're going to know that we're, we're going to need to know was it the broad goals, first campaign and second campaign. Yeah, and socio political transformation, economic development are the two things there. That's what these campaigns are about. Um, the, yeah, the broad goals. Yeah, right. Their broad goals are right. socio political first transformation. transformation. First campaign, second campaign, understand what it's doing there. Okay. Yeah, and they're going to have campaign. When you go through your book, there's a big chart. Hold on. Let's see, let's see. If I can get it real quick. Uh, is that it? I don't know. That's the Congresses. No one cares about those. They weren't very useful, anyways. If you didn't have a diagram to read on the book, or you may have, and I didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So look on your book here on page 67, right? It gives you a list of all the campaigns, right, that they went through. Uh, land reform, suppression of counter revolutionaries. Right? I mean, we know what that one is. Land reform is probably an economic one that probably didn't work, but it, it wasn't nefarious, right? Suppression of counter revolutionaries probably didn't go well for a whole bunch of people, okay? Um, other things, um, three anti five anti thought reform of intellectuals. That's not good, okay? That means they put the intellectuals in the camps, right? Uh, 55 to 56, agricultural cooperativization, social transformation of industry and commerce, okay? Uh, in 57, 100 flowers, anti riot okay? 58 to 61, which is going to get everyone killed, right? It's greatly forward for fame. Um, and then, of course, 66 to 76, cultural revolution, right? Um, and they'll have other parts of it too, okay? All right, and that's so they don't say some of the campaigns. All right. So one more thing, just um, sure. on the book, is there is there a, 
your reading process, or do you have certain chapters you want read? Yeah, and I put I put it on the syllabus. You did put it all on the syllabus. Yeah, it's one, one through four, four for this one. Yeah. Chapters one through four. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, campaigns with zero on specific animals and groups as targets of the wrath of the campaign. Okay. The targets would suffer severely undergoing struggle sessions. Okay. In which they would be subjected to overwhelming psychological and physical abuse. That's torture. Your book puts that very nicely. Okay. Um, that's torture. To make them admit their faults or whatever it may be. Even okay. if they weren't wrong. Even if they had nothing to do with it. False confessions, things of that nature. Okay. That's why sometimes it seems like I'm a little bit out of bounds whenever you call the Chinese Communist Party much more what we would call in the lines of a religious cult, actually. Okay? Because that's what they practice, right? Thought reform, breaking people down, building them back up beatings, right? Torture, false confessions, admitting you're wrong, forming the thought of them, especially as the leader. So sometimes whenever I say that, it seems a little bit kind of, oh, well, they're kind of a political party. How do they do that? Well, this is how they were doing it, okay? And if you ever read up about religious cults, you'll see that realm. For example, the Jamestown, or Jonestown, right? In the 70s, right? From the People's Temple. That's exactly what they were doing, okay? Beatings. Struggle sessions, that sort of thing. It didn't help that Jim Jones was also a communist, right? And he liked communism. Mm -hmm. um, and it kind of came from this at the same time, but these were very common things, okay? The targets that emerged during the course of the campaign received formal punishment. In many cases, this punishment took the form of long years in prison at hard labor, okay? By the way, those camps still exist to this day, okay? Really? Most of the camps in China still exist. So it's what they did for real when they was that fake news when they pulled up when they got that footage of taking those people and probably not. Probably not. I, I mean, um, of course, this is kind of a weird thing to say, but of course the GPRK cams are a whole lot worse. And so we got that's, it. that's why you focus a little bit more on those from North Korea. Uh, and some of the stories coming out of the North Korean labor and prison camps are so much more heinous. Um, but remember, the PRC has a lot more money. Right? They're able to throw more things out of the rug. Uh, I mean, they can throw their money around in a way that other communist authoritarian regimes never could. And so that's why you do see suppression of some stories in a lot. I don't think that's unfair. Um, so yeah, you do, you do see that pretty regularly. Um, although it could range from public execution. We like public executions? Nah, probably not. Price. Would any of you go to an execution? Mm -hmm. No. No, no, no matter not. what. Like, <laughs> even if like they killed your parents, would you go to the execution? If someone murdered like your mom and they got death penalty, would you go to the execution? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, because that changed it. Yeah, yeah, but you're not just gonna like go there on yeah. a Saturday afternoon entertainment, right? We've uh, had our time, but you talk Oh, definitely. The, but, they called him the killing judge in Fort Smith. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you got caught in Fort Smith, let me tell you, man, he, no. he had ten gallons at all times. Yeah, so it's not that um, uh, public execution. To be fair, though, the United States was not offering any public executions in 1950. Exactly. <laughs> you know, we're talking about yeah, right. probably 100, 150 years prior, right? Is when a lot of that occurred. Um, um, but yeah, um, just simply the nice just to improve one spot. They could be very, very benign these campaigns and the struggle sessions, okay? But that's part of the terror, right? Is you don't know what's going to happen to you when you go for the struggle session, right? Just imagine someone's, hey, we're going to need you to come and we're going to need to talk about this, right? That's the Chinese get loose, okay? And you know, you can be publicly executed almost on the spot, right? Or you can get off with just an admonishment. 
think how scary and how much terror that brings into you whenever you do it because you don't know what's going to happen, right? Because if everyone's being executed summarily, okay, you run, right? At that point, you run no matter what, okay? But there's a possibility it's just going to be an admonishment. So that's why we go, why did all these people just kind of submit to these struggle sessions and doing all these things and this torture? Because not everybody was getting tortured. There was a chance you weren't going to get tortured. And there was a chance that you could just be admonished, you could go and prove your thought, and then everything's going to be okay, right? You go back to your family, but you never know until it happens. Yeah. And so uh, it's one of the... Um, it's one of the real terrors of it. Um, but you have to know how to improve your thought, don't you? <laughs> oh, I have you a feeling they're going to let you know how to improve your thought. Oh, yeah, okay. they, they, I, I don't think it's a big secret. They're going to they're gonna tell you, you know, but yeah, they're going to. Uh, At first, there has to be guessing, though. Because when these guys went through that process, I mean, you're like, okay, what do I I'm think? sure they tell I'm sure they told them at the beginning. I'm sure they told them at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is because of this, 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 and this. Um, because, you know, if you're not going to tell them, just shoot them. Sorry, that's kind of a bad way to think about it, right? But right. if you're yeah. not going to tell them, why don't waste your time if you're the Communist Party? Just ask you to get it over with. Um, and so, but yeah, so we definitely don't want to be a part of a Chinese Communist Party campaign, do we? No. Every one of us probably would. We would have too many notions of capitalism in our head, right? We would have too many notions of the West, right? Um, that's one of kind of the things that always bothers me when I think about this is knowing like that these you know, people that got caught up in this probably, most of them were probably innocent, okay? But second is, is that, you know, any normal person from the West probably would have been similarly executed under this. We would have way too many notions, right? Can we, can we, Bernie Sanders would be executed for being a capitalist. Yeah. He definitely would. And right. can more houses than this today? Huh? All of our videos? I, yeah, that's. It was a cop that kid singing the, the country singer, and he said he said the wrong word. And I mean, dude, Life on, a, on a house cam. On a little, oh, Martin Wallen? Yeah, yeah. On a, on a little, what do you call it, the doorbell? They, 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 they did the, it to TMZ. So can you imagine this? You know, that's one of the. You can know, you imagine this? Well, oh, it would be over. But but they would, but they would have, they would have similar things. But they wouldn't need the video. Someone would just say that you said. Right? Just say. If you don't like someone, right? Oh, I heard them talking really great about Adam Smith. Right? Okay. <laughs> we gotta talk to this person. Okay? That's tough, right? So you don't even need the video under some of these circumstances. Okay? So that's the other thing to kind of realize about this, right? Well, Bernie would definitely get executed. Through the Cultural Revolution? Yeah. A Jewish man that can read in the middle of China? Yeah. With multiple houses? Yeah. It's over. Right? Oh, definitely. 100%. Okay? So, even Conrad Bernie would have got it. Right? Of course, I would have got it. Right? Right? I always call him Conrad Bernie because he took his, um, what was it? He took his honeymoon to the Soviet Union back in the day. <laughs> and I'm kind of like, okay, there's a lot of places. Like, I can't even imagine me telling my wife. You know, we're going for our honeymoon, the Soviet Union. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's going to be awesome. We, <laughs> Cancun, right? Like, you know, the Bahamas, you know, somewhere like that, right? That's kind of crazy, isn't it? Imagine, Teddy, you're about to get married and you're like, we're going to go on our honeymoon and we're going to go to DPR. Yeah. So, we're probably shut it. Yeah. Could be smart, right? I get smacked. <laughs> Or a good man for you to get down the or whatever his name is. Well, you can't get in. There's no flights allowed from the United States. Only diplomatic flights are allowed. Yeah. Um, you have to sneak across the Chinese border to get into North Korea, apparently. Right? 
right? Not that I'm advocating anyone try to do that. Right? Well, you're dead if you do. You know, if, if you got across, oh. uh, there's uh, if you if you look for it carefully, I think it's still on it. It may not be, but um, uh, Leah Lean or something. She was kind of like an investigative journalist for CBS News, I think. She got actually in to do like a 60 minute piece on it. Um, of course, with heavy guards, right? Like thought reform, political officers, everything like that. And so, um, and she got to go into the houses of a couple of people and talk to them, right? Of course, with the political officers there and everything like that. And I think she, she asked something like, oh, you know, life's tough here, you know, and basically the North Koreans basically said, oh, yeah, I know life's tough here. It's not easy, you know, that sort of stuff. Um, but think about how bad it would be without the dear leader. Like, it'd be so much worse if you had here, right? And that's real sort of brainwashing, right? And it, that's legitimate brainwashing. That's why whenever I talk about especially communism of this type, Right, not the idea of communism, but the actual implementation of it. It resembles a little bit more a religious cult than it does uh, a government system. Right, but religious cults govern themselves too. Right, there are rules. Right, you have to follow. It, 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 it. Okay, so even the the mint jumps out in El Dorado. You remember them, the ones with the long hair or whatever, the FLDS, the fundamentalist uh, woman. You remember they were all out there and they had the long hair and they were making them get married to like 80 year old men when they were like 12 or whatever? Yeah, you're talking about that. Yeah, it's crazy. That happens all over you. Yeah, well, I mean, it's going on right now. Probably. Yeah. There's religious cults all over the place, right? Not that I want to join one anytime soon. I wouldn't do well in a religious cult, right? I'd get kicked out. I, I'd probably learn. Um, but. Uh, all right, we're going to stop there because I can't go much more. I'm kind of dealing with pain here, so. Um, um, and so I'm meeting this afternoon. Uh, so. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take this off the record here. So. Oh. Um. Go ahead and take this off the record.